Discriminatory systems fuel inequity, limit opportunity, and imperil the lives, health, and well-being of communities of color. These prize winners are working to remove barriers and create fair and just opportunity for all. Systemic racism in Alaska is really profound. We still have to deal with racism today. A lot of people, they don't think that we should have our culture and that we should not worry about any of the things that have happened to us and our people. Really, to know who we are today, we have to look back at our history to really assess what our people have experienced over the last hundred years. Tikalu Native Village was subject to a lot of coal mining in the area, and there is a legacy of trauma as a result of that. The coal mine activities disrupted the salmon habitat. So Chickaloon went in and put that back into its natural alignment so that the salmon could become prolific in the hopes of providing food security for our tribe. Sovereignty is important to us because it's one of our basic fundamental human rights. The things that I admire most about the Chickaloon tribe is their tenacity and advocacy for their communities. They make things happen. The Atnawatana Night Deniaden Lifehouse Kaitz Kuna Community Health Center is really a place for everyone. It's not just the Alaska Native population that they're impacting here. They're working with all the non-Native folks that live in our communities. I can't imagine my neighbor not having health care when I can go get health care. It is my ultimate hope that someday our children, my daughter, doesn't have to experience any racism and doesn't have to take on the legacy of this work. It's done. That we've achieved equity within our community, that ultimate care and love, a beloved community that we build for our children. Inequities are not created by mistake. They're created by institutions who predate on those who are not able to advocate for themselves. In Rocky Mount, there's been a long-standing pattern of investment. We have one side of town, the Nash side, the white side of town, has flourished at the expense of the black side of town or the Edgecombe side of town. You can walk and see it. It's not hard. When you stand on those railroad tracks, it is a reminder of what happened when you put one last stand and one greater than That history is now being lifted up so we can recover from those past traumas that we went through. One of the examples of how the city has addressed the legacy of structural racism is the construction of the downtown event center. We were very intentional about saying we need a project that would begin changing the course of investment to reroute it to downtown and to Edgecombe County. By the time the event center was built, the rate of tax revenue generated for the first time in history in Edgecombe County was higher than in Nash County. It's gonna be intergenerational to accomplish the changes we're talking about. We have to continue to press through the challenges and let our resilience be the end of our story. Racism is a public health crisis. We're talking about how do we address structural and systemic racism that perpetuates, sometimes unintentionally, inequities for some of our, our residents. During the pandemic, we found out that uh, early on, the majority of the people who uh, are aware of the social distancing, testing, and vaccination, majority of those folks are in the white population. We need everybody, um, well, people who are Latino, people who are Black, to be sitting at the table to be able to have their voices heard, and we need others to listen to their voices being heard. A lot of the work's been uncomfortable. It's been, it's been challenging. It's been um, a space in which uh, it's gotten heated at times as we talk about uh, what those things look like. As a refugee, I cannot see through the lens of wealthy people. And wealthy people cannot see through the lens of people who don't have anything to start with. Oftentimes, when talking about racial equity, immigration has a lot of uh, racism embedded in it. 
One of the things that we're working on here at the Coalition of Healthy Greater Worcester is being able to train and establish uh, those within our coalition to be in those conversations. When we talk about these things, uh, there's emotion tied to it. Uh, and it's hard to separate those and it takes really, really skilled facilitators and individuals and we have those here in the city uh, to be able to hold those conversations. We have not been able to come to a perfect solution, but the fact that we get together, we talk and we keep trying, it helps us to move forward.